Evening, we can reveal tonight the man taken by a crocodile in the Mary River yesterday was 24-year-old Darwin IT worker Sean Cole. As the search for his body continued throughout the night and today, it has emerged that Sean and a mate were swimming, a fatal mistake in a river infested with killers. Reporter Jake Horrocks spent the night at the scene. Here's his report. This is Sean Cole, a lover of the outdoors, footy, friends and his family. A local from Catherine, living in Darwin, at just 24, taken by a croc at the Mary River Wilderness Retreat. The attack took place at around 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Sean and a friend were swimming in a known and marked crocodile area. It's still unclear why. As usual with crocodiles, it was quick, it was unexpected and sent the campsite into panic. I didn't know what was going on and then my wife, I said to my wife, I said, I don't know what's going on. She walked down to the river and next minute the, uh, uh, I think the, one of the guys that worked here walked up and said, look, I think someone's been taken by a croc. And I went, oh, you're joking. Because I, I sort of thought, geez, there must be something happening because he was driving so fast down here. Police, TIG and Parks and Wildlife arrived quickly. Search boats departed while bystanders watched from the shore. Light then became the biggest issue. Hope of a miracle all but gone. A hunt for the croc starting with ear ringing clarity. As you can hear, the boys are going off down there at the moment. That became a familiar sound as the search for answers continued, even as darkness took over. But despite those shots, there was no definite result. Guys, any luck so far tonight? No, we've, um, we've been going uh, certainly since the sun went down. Uh, we just uh, grabbed some refreshments and some water and we're heading back out for, to search for, for the rest of the night. And that was indeed the case. Tireless efforts which saw three crocs killed. Dawn and in came the reinforcements. The picture starting to become a little clearer. We commenced searching um, the areas that we considered to be the most likely. Uh, we continued searching all night. Uh, we're utilising side scan sonar on one of the boats to uh, assess the bottom of the riverbed and, and look for areas that, uh, that might assist us with our search. The Mary River is home to thousands upon thousands of saltwater crocs. You could say that they thrive here. It raises the question as to why would someone swim in an area such as this. There are warnings and markings as to why not to swim here, but it seems that they're just not getting through. Most definitely there's a sign as soon as you um, drive in the area. But uh, as Neil said, look, we aren't aware of, you know, it's, people do things and that's it. I can't explain the reason that uh, seeing the two men hop in the water, that's not something that, um, that we can sort of go into at this stage. Um, but yes, it is the Northern Territory, it is a waterway, it is accessible by the ocean. Uh, salt water crocodiles are prevalent. The search for Sean and the killer croc will continue tonight with no plans of stopping in the near future. Jay Corritz, Nine News. In one of the great grand final upsets, Wanderers have won the NTFL Premiership, defeating St Mary's by 34 points at TIO Stadium. The Mark Marks came out firing and never let up, gaining revenge in the grand final rematch. Side by side, they stood in the evening sun. Two proud clubs that have taken very different paths, playing one game to decide a season. You can't win it tomorrow, you've got to win it today. After falling behind early last year, the start was key for Wanderers and they came out with the right intent. On the slide, takes it on the chest. First blood for the Eagles and they didn't stop there. Crisp work by both hand and foot saw Liam Patrick nab his first. He went with the left boot a short time later, leaving the Saints in shock. Liam Patrick again. Onto a St Mary's mistake, Saints under pressure. The fired up McFarlane got the Saints back on track, the crowd got vocal, the clouds rolling in as well. On the field, the Eagles were flying. Oh, he's done it, hasn't he? Devin Ferreira. They call the third the Premiership quarter and the Muck Mucks stood up in a monumental way. Motlop to Motlop, a killer combination. He kicks it. Oh, that's a telling blow. That is more than a goal. They were popping up everywhere, pride, passion, determination etched on the face of the skipper in blue. Not a club to lay down, it was the exact same at the other end. Will it signal the return of the green machine? Well, the effort was certainly there, demonstrated even more so in the final huddle. Get out, go dangerous, your boy, up, right? Just seconds into the fourth came a crucial moment, a chance to start a run. 
That went wide, heads went down, but as champions do, they make amends. Gets in space, Shannon Rioli. Shannon Rioli goes for goal. He's a superstar. But for every Saints positive, the Eagles had a reply. Liam Patrick sealing the win with a massive solo effort. The siren, the finish, the upset, the mayhem coming soon after. The blue and gold army have been delivered a stunning victory. Thomas Motlop taking the Cheney medal, but he must have been tough to pick amongst a team of champions. His team believed when many others didn't. They're now premiers of the NTFL. Now a story that has absolutely everything. Local bodybuilder and Darwin parking inspector Atif Ahmed is taking the streets by storm after winning the Arnold Classic competition in Melbourne. So much so, the gentle giant is now looking to turn pro. Here's proof that nothing is impossible. That's right, there are actually parking inspectors that people like. Yeah, I think the video, brother. Shaking hands with people on the street, much like his namesake. The only difference being, bodybuilder Atif Ahmed is handing out $40 parking fines. That's right, if we slow this down, Atif is actually congratulated after giving out a ticket. While that boggles the mind, so does his latest non-work achievements, taking out the Arnold Classic bodybuilding competition in Melbourne. How do you feel? It's really good. I love Australia. Today, some supplement shopping, a chance to check out the trophy cabinet. And when you look like this, there's got to be a free show as well. Four, ten and nine, that's only my shot. Safe to say he's embracing his newfound fame. I think she's reading a newspaper like this one, and she's looking for first me and newspaper, me and newspaper. And she said, it's you. I think, yes, it's me. I'm going to book your car. Despite being the size of most of the cars that he books, Atif doesn't get it all of his own way. He was going to give up bodybuilding for two years, but after a chat with his wife, he's back in the gym. She said, no, you start your bodybuilding again. I said, really? She said, no, I'll cook for your food. What do you want? Well, I'm glad you asked because the list is extensive to say the least. In my morning breakfast, porridge, oats and... Um, Six egg white and 100 gram turkey, 250 gram chicken, 150 gram rice, 250 gram beef and broccoli. Again, two hours chicken and broccoli. And before training, one hour before training, uh, 250 gram chicken and rice. But that's the hard work and sacrifice required for this humble, quietly spoken gentle giant of the stage and our roads. The professional bodybuilding circuit now awaits. I'm in the parking inspector Atif Khan, Darwin boy.